Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and we have been talking a little bit about Curse of Strahd recently because if you can't tell from all of these beautiful bookmarks, I've actually been running Curse of Strahd and been having a great time with it. However, I realized that as a DM, even a veteran DM, I would have really liked a little extra help when I first started Curse of Strahd. So I'm making some videos on how to best run Curse of Strahd. And today we are specifically going to be talking about the things that you need when you go to run your first session of Curse of Strahd. Now, of course, these things can be in any session of Curse of Strahd. I'm several sessions in and I still use every one of these things that I have out on the table. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So here we go. All right, humanoids, so I thought the best way to do this is to actually just set up the table like I'm going to run a Curse of Strahd uh, session and then go through each one of the items that are on there and what I would recommend. Before we head on over to the table though, I have your Dungeon Master question. So here it is, all you DMs out there, answer this question for me. What is the one thing in a gothic or scary pre-written adventure that you love to have at the table. Leave that down in the comments below. We're trying to make these videos the best resource for dungeon masters out there, and I cannot do that without your help. So let's head on over to the halfling table. Alrighty, humanoids, so here we are at my D&D table. I, first of all, recognize I have a lot of room. That's because I custom built this table because I take up a lot of room. I can't really help it, it's who I am. So this is my table though, and these are the things that I always have on my table when I'm running Curse of Strahd. So there are some things here that are absolutely necessary and some things that are additional that are good to have. Let's go over the absolutely necessary first. And that is, of course, number one, you need to have a copy of Curse of Strahd. Now, you should have read through this at least twice before your first session. And I know that seems like a lot of work, and it is a lot of work. But once you've done that, I can promise that the sessions will go very smoothly. If you haven't actually read through this, then it's going to be kind of a um, kind of crapshoot if it goes well or not. So what I have done with my copy of Curse of Strahd is I have added sticky notes. I do love sticky notes. All of these sticky notes are the different places in Curse of Strahd that my players could potentially go. So if they end up going to Bone Grinder Mill, instead of having to look at the index to figure out where that's at, I just hit the sticky note and boom. Now I can remind myself as we're going through what all is in Bone Grinder Mill. So I always have that. Again, this is for reference not to read out of. I am not trying to read this as I play, but there are times when I definitely need the reference. Next of all, very important, is maps. You get this fold-out map uh, with your adventure, and this is a very nice map. I'm not saying this isn't a nice map. It's great. However, it has quite a few spoilers in there, so it's not exactly a map I would recommend giving to players. Um, I made that mistake, actually. It was not, not a good mistake to make. This is more for your reference. You can buy uh, non-spoiler maps online. Of course you can find them, but I always recommend paying for art. Artists need to be recognized for what they do, and I highly recommend that you just go and pay for it. Mike ha is the one who made these maps. He also has a website where he sells them. He has a Curse of Strahd bundle for $30 that is so worth it. I bought it, I can attest, it is fantastic and totally worth it. It gives you an entire set of player maps that are spoiler free and an entire set of DM maps for yourself. Those are digital, of course. Um, those are not physical copies, I should say. And I actually run my maps digitally, which is why I only have this one over here for my own quick reference. Uh, I have a TV in the center of my table, and I project maps onto that and use Roll20 to hide things and whatnot, so I actually use digital maps. Which leads me to the next thing that you are definitely going to need, which is miniatures of some kind. Do you see here? I've got some physical miniatures that I painted myself. There's a wolf, 
and some spiders. And then I have some really cheap uh, basic miniatures that I just painted black and then dry brushed uh, silver over them. These are what I use for remnants, um, wraiths, uh, rites, things like that. All, all those undead yummy things. Uh, you will need the following miniatures. 100% guarantee you're going to need these. Wolves. Lots of wolves. You will need vampire spawn. You will need zombies. And then you will need a variety of just these um, really cheap ones that you paint black to use for different things. Highly, highly recommend that. You can do physical ones or you can do paper miniatures. So if you look in here, I've actually prepped for um, Mines of Fendelver. I prepped Kragmaw Hideout. And these are paper miniatures. I love, love, love them because they store flat just like this. You pop the base down and boom, you're good to go with your miniatures. And they are beautiful, really good pieces of art. So you can get these for free at printableheroes.com. I'll leave that link down in the description as well. Again, not an affiliate or anything like that. Just absolutely love what they're doing over there. So Printable Heroes, you can get a whole bunch of vampire spawn, zombies, all that stuff. Wolves, those are the ones that you're going to need. Or you can do like I do, combination of paper and tokens. So you can get tokens as well. Uh, and a lot of times you can find those or make those for free too. So those are the miniatures that you're gonna need. Next thing you have to have is a deck of cards. And you're gonna wanna split this deck of cards between the face cards and all of the number cards. These are for the fortune telling session. You're going to use three of these uh, number cards and you're gonna use two of the face cards. I do not recommend to do the fortune telling live <laughs> with your players. Um, yes, you can, and you can flip the cards in front of them and tell their fortune and all of that if you want to. I just don't recommend it because it's super boring unless you have memorized all the fortunes ahead of time, which ain't nobody got time for that. So I don't do that. Another thing people often suggest is getting tarot cards and using actual tarot cards instead. Um, I just have zero other use for tarot cards and it seemed like a waste of money. So a normal deck of cards does just fine. You're definitely going to, going to want to have those until they do their fortune telling. And that's pretty much all that you need to run Curse of Strahd. You need the book, you need maps, you need miniatures, you need a deck of cards. Here's where the fun things come in that make life just a little bit easier. First of all, I have my beautiful, wonderful binder. I love, love, love this binder. Um, this is actually the binder that I use for every campaign, so every session is prepped in this bad boy. And here is what you're going to want out of here. You can store your paper miniatures here. But the things that I find particularly useful are under my events tab. And that is roadside events for the old salvage road. This paper is actually for you for free um, down in the comments below. Uh, I make stuff like this for Patreon. Um, and I also make it for my uh, email list group that I have. Um, so if you would like more things like this, consider checking out Patreon or signing up for the DMs League. I send out some free stuff every month there. Um, but this just has some really interesting events and encounters um, to spice things up a little bit. Because in the book, they have one chart. They have one chart for daytime encounters and one chart for nighttime encounters. And Boy, oh boy, does it get repetitive. And I am not a fan of repeating encounters. So this just adds some flavor, adds some interesting things that could possibly happen. And I love to have things like this on hand. Um, I've got more roadside events. And as you can see on here, when I actually use one, I circle it, mark it out, and say where it happened so I know not to use it again. Urban events, mountainside events, because, you know, they, there's actually, you know, the guy in the mountains, the crazy guy in the mountains. So I have a whole, actually, mountain events that can happen because of that. 
forest events, lots and lots of those because of the old salvage forest. Uh, and then fortunes told. Why should these fortunes be the only ones told in Curse of Strahd? You got Vistini everywhere. Everybody has, you know, a little set of cards. So why not have some more fortunes? So that's what I have there as well. The next thing that makes life really, really easy when running Curse of Strahd is to um, go through your monster manual and make copies of all of the pages of the monsters that are super, super common, such as the vampire spawn, extremely common, definitely gonna want this page. On here I have death dog and dire wolf, also very common. Zombies, rights, wraiths, different. Willow wisps, um, and then just some fun, well actually, that's for Eberron, sorry. So I have all of those copied off here so that I can make notes next to them and have them without having to flip through the monster manual. I do have the monster manual on hand. You will need this to run Curse of Strahd. However, I don't like to open it unless absolutely necessary because it takes up even more room and obviously I like to spread out here. So I always make sure to have that too. Next thing I really, really enjoy are these cards. Because Curse of Strahd is known for being a very difficult campaign, I like to increase that difficulty just a little bit with critical fails and critical hits. So these cards um, do random things to the, MP to the PC that either has a critical fail or is hit critically. Um, and these are super, super fun. I love to have those on hand too. Next optional thing is I always have an iPad open to um, hero for hire, or sorry, NPC for hire. So here in the tavern, you can do, let's say I want a clergyman, and it gives me a really beautiful image and then a name and just a little bit about them. So if I'm panicking and I need some NPCs, boom, I have them there. Also adventurer. So um, in Curse of Strahd, people can come into Bar Barovia in a lot of different ways, so you could have a bunch of adventurers there. So I like to have NPCs open and ready to go. And last of all, something I feel like is necessary for Curse of Strahd is music. So I have a wireless speaker that I have on the table that is connected to my phone. And on here, I run creepy soundscapes and music. I find these on YouTube. If you just uh, YouTube search for Curse of Strahd, it will come up with some good soundscapes. Uh, you can also just um, search for horror, um, fantasy soundscapes, things like that, and things will come up. And they're, they're several hours long. So you can just play them and have some really cool sound effects for your Curse of Strahd game too. And then obviously make sure that you have somewhere to take notes so that you know exactly what's going on there. And that, my dear humanoids, is my Curse of Strahd setup. So those are the items that I feel like are necessary for Curse of Strahd, but also some of the ones that I like to throw in there that I have found particularly useful. If you really like that events page, I'm actually going to make an entire binder for Curse of Strahd. This is designed to be a DM binder that you can literally um, use almost exclusively uh, to run Curse of Strahd after you've read the campaign book. So it's going to have one page sheets for each of the locations that give you the overview, reminder, NPC lists for that area, how things connect, as well as lots of different events for specific areas as well as for travel. And I think it's going to be a really cool resource. I'm kind of creating that as I run Curse of Strahd. Um, so give me a little more time on that one, but it will be available over on Patreon. And one last thing I want to do is give a huge shout out to today's sponsor. No, it's not an item. It's not uh, software or man trimmers or whatever weird thing is going around on YouTube videos. My sponsor is you. It is all of these incredible patrons who support me over on Patreon love what Half Lane Hobbies is doing and want to be a part of it. And it's you that's watching this video right now and hopefully subscribing. Thank you so, so very much for caring about Half Lane Hobbies and <laughs> the weirdness that I get into. I literally couldn't do it without you and you are very much appreciated. 
And until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out.